Well, hello, Facebook. Once again, I am uh, doing a session on the kingdom of God. This will be session three. Uh, we're having pretty good response on the sessions that we have done. Uh, today, I'm going to look at uh, four distinct titles or ways the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is looked at in scripture. Matthew says and uses the title, the kingdom of heaven. Luke uses the kingdom of God. And two other places we see one says the kingdom of the Son, and another one says the Father's kingdom. But no matter how the terminology or the writing goes on the kingdom of God, it's about the rule and reign of the kingdom, the basilia. Uh, that is the word we looked at in the last session. There is a slight difference when we see the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the Father's kingdom, or the kingdom of the Son. The focus is in who is being written to and the terminology being used. You see, the kingdom of heaven, most of the time when that terminology is used, it was trying to reach Jewish people. The Jewish people were looking for a, a king to appear, a geographical uh, kingdom to be set up upon the earth, uh, and they knew that it would be a reflection of heaven itself. And so... When we see the words kingdom of heaven, we see that many times that terminology in Matthew is used more towards the Jewish people. When we see the kingdom of God, that terminology used, it's mainly for the world universal. And we see the kingdom of the Son and the Father's kingdom is mainly for the saints. So in Daniel 7.22, it says, Until the Ancient of Days come, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time that came that the saints possessed the kingdom. There is a role that we are to be doing, and it is to possess the kingdom. Uh, we've been, we're going through this series here, uh, and we're going to start today by just talking about the kingdom of God, the first terminology that we see primarily used in the book of Luke. The kingdom of God is more focused about the totality of God when we see the word kingdom of God. It is about the kingdom of God from the beginning to the end. What is presented to the world at large, the, the all-encompassing kingdom of God. It is about the rule of God upon the earth and how that rule is to be walked out. It is about the earthly blessings of God and how the kingdom releases those blessings into the earth. Ninety-two times in the New Testament, the words kingdom of God appear. That phrase is used. And remember, it is about trying to reach, uh, basically reaching uh, the world, the, the entire world, believer and unbeliever both. That terminology is used. When we see the word kingdom of heaven, it is mainly dealing with, as I said earlier, is dealing with trying to reach into the Jewish people. Uh, the terminology is used to because it's about the ruling power of a kingdom coming down from heaven. It's about God ruling from an eternal realm, and while God is establishing his rule upon the earth. A verse that we see in many places is Daniel 7, uh, 2 44, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. It is about a ruling kingdom that is ruling in the hearts and lives of believers. It is about the lordship of Christ in that kingdom. See, the, the Jewish people were concerned about a rule of God on the earth and not necessarily a rule coming from heaven. Uh, they wanted a fleshly blood type king to rule geographical Israel. And they weren't really looking for a spiritual king and a spiritual kingdom. But Matthew talks about this 33 times. He talks about the kingdom of heaven. He talks about it being a past, present, and future tense. Uh, three times Matthew talks about in the terminology as we study in the book of Matthew around the kingdom of heaven, we see three times he speaks of it being all at one time or at once, past, present, and future. Generally, we see this, the best example is in Matthew 24, and it speaks of these three as well with three questions. Verse 3, 
It talks about when shall these things be? What is the sign of your coming? And when is the end of the age? It's basically talking about past, present, future tense. Uh, and what we see is that this is about an earthly perspective of seeing the kingdom, God's kingdom, here upon the earth. Today, much of the church is not understanding the kingdom because they're looking for a future hope instead of a right now answer. The kingdom is an answer for this moment of time that we're living in. Uh, mainly, if we have wrong eschatology, we end up looking for a future event coming, much like the Pharisees and religious leaders of Jesus' day. We're looking for something that is futuristic and we'll miss that the kingdom is right now. Uh, partly it becomes down to the fact that we're not recognizing the lordship of a king and a kingdom, and we have separated those two away. Uh, the verbiage of the kingdom of heaven is really speaking about an eternal heavenly blessings of God that can now be attained upon the earth. Uh, Ephesians 1.3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Well, he's talking about that in heaven there are these blessings, but he's also talking about a people right now living upon the earth, engaging into those blessings. A few verses in, on in Ephesians, in Ephesians 3.10, he says that until now, uh, uh, to the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known the church, the manifold wisdom of God. In other words, through the, through the church, that everything, principalities, powers, everything in heavenly places is going to see this kingdom manifested into the church itself here upon the earth. We also see the words kingdom of the sun. When we see the words kingdom of the sun, it's basically focusing around the rule of Christ through his believers being established into this kingdom. In Luke 22, 29, it says, I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me. In other words, we're getting and gaining the same kingdom as sons and daughters that Christ also was representing with his father. He says that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on the thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. We also see the Father's kingdom. We see the kingdom of the Son, and we see the Father's kingdom. The Father's kingdom is talking more about Christ as a set ruler, and that we are ambassadors for one who was sent out to represent the kingdom. In other words, we are ambassadors, 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. In other words, we are representing Christ as ambassadors for the kingdom, just like Jesus represented the kingdom for his father. We are ambassadorial people. We are sons and daughters, but we are representing the father's kingdom here upon the earth. The father's kingdom, remember we have the kingdom of heaven, we have the kingdom of of God, we have the kingdom of the Son, and we have the Father's kingdom. That is the terminology in the New Testament concerning the kingdom. There are four references to this aspect of the Father's kingdom. Matthew 13, 43, it says, Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father, who has ears to hear. It's giving the ownership of this kingdom to the Father, and we become the stewards of that kingdom through our righteousness. In Matthew 26, 29, I say unto you, I'll not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in my Father's kingdom. Again, he's referring, Christ is referring that it is the Father's kingdom. In Luke 12, 32, he says, Fear not, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In Luke 11, 2, he says, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. These are four references specifically to the Father's kingdom. Now, why do I bring this up? Because there seems to be confusion about the differences between is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven the same? Yes, they are. It is the rule and reign. It is the basilia of God. It is his kingdom. He is the Lord of that kingdom. He has sent his son Christ as a representative of that kingdom. And as he was sent, so are you sent. They are all identical. 
It's just when the terminology is used in Scripture, if you study around the verses and what is being said, you'll see that there are different focuses for the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven was mainly focused more to try to capture the religious people of the day with an understanding that they were looking for eternity, an eternal day one day in the future. But when we talk about the kingdom of God, we're talking about something that is to reach the world itself. It encompasses believers and unbelievers. In other words, what I'm saying is when we see these four different terminologies and phrases, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, the Father's kingdom, the kingdom of the Son, it's talking about the same kingdom. And I want to be very clear about that. It's talking about the rule and reign, and it's giving examples of how the rule and reign is, who is ruling and reigning, and what their responsibilities are. These things become, start to come into what I would call four different areas of the kingdom being expressed by these phrases. It comes into being the mandate of the kingdom of heaven. The mandate is that all men would be saved. The mandate is that they would have entrance, John 3, 3 and 3, 5, into the kingdom of heaven, that there was an eternal destiny for every person. And it is a future tense, but it's also a present tense because that, that future destiny can be known even now with an assurance in our heart at salvation. So the kingdom of heaven becomes more of a mandate the kingdom of God becomes the assignment that we have been assigned to bring this kingdom to the world, the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, not just the gospel of salvation, the gospel of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom is the assignment that we have been given. The kingdom of the son, that is the provision that comes with the, with the kingdom, that there is a provision that is so far reaching, not only is every need met, but your sin is forgiven. Mercy is extended. Forgiveness is present. The love of God is, is accosting our hearts. Passion is being formed because of what the, the kingdom of the Son or what the actions of the Son did in the kingdom release this great provision for all of us. And the last one, the Father's kingdom. The Father's kingdom is the original intention of the Father. What the Father intended clear back to the time of the garden uh, with Adam and Eve was the intention of the Father's kingdom. That is the example of the kingdom flourishing upon the earth with the sin nature removed and, and all of that uh, uh, of what it was to be like and what he dreamt it would be like for us living here upon the earth. So we see the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the Son, and the Father's kingdom. That's the phraseology uh, in the New Testament. I'll say it again. The kingdom of heaven is the mandate that all men would know him and have the opportunity for eternity. The kingdom of God is the assignment. It is to the entire world to show forth the king and the kingdom. The kingdom of the Son is the provision to enter into the kingdom, and as a, a, being a joint heir with Christ, we have everything provided for us to advance this kingdom. The Father's kingdom, the original intention of the Father. It is his kingdom. It is his ways. It is, is his pathway. It is his kingdom that we are stewards of. And so these four different terminologies are all describing the same thing. They're all describing the rule and the reign of Christ, the rule and reign that comes in the kingdom, what we are to do with this kingdom, and how we are to apply it. So I'm hoping today that just because you see the terminology, because I've had many people ask me, what's the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God? There is no difference. It is the same kingdom. There is only one kingdom. There is not a kingdom of darkness. There is a kingdom of, of the Father. There is a kingdom of the Son, a kingdom of God, and a kingdom of heaven. And it's all about the king and his kingdom. And the phraseology is just different because of the people they were trying to reach. So I hope that helps clear up even some of the how we read scripture. Uh, and if you study to show yourself approved, you'll find some of these things. Uh, look at look at this. The kingdom of God is a universal kingdom that every single person can join.
That's the kingdom of God. It's to the world, the assignment. The kingdom of heaven is the mandate that every man would know eternity through this kingdom. The kingdom of the son, the provision, and the father's kingdom. He is the original one who brought forth the kingdom, birthed the created it, allowed us to be the stewards of it. So that's it for today. Next time I'm going to come in, I'm going to probably talk about the mysteries of the kingdom and, the, and that it is a theocracy. Talk a little bit about some of the things that we see in Matthew 13. So if you enjoyed this video today, uh, share it, pass it around to others so they can have an understanding of what these four phrases actually mean and kind of the focus. I know I went through it very quickly, but I'm trying to limit these videos to just about 15 minutes long. Okay, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you the next time. Uh, by the way, if you're up in the New England area this weekend, I'll be in Massachusetts uh, ministering. Uh, I posted a, a, a link on my uh, wall of where I'll be at. and You can just uh, see that and get directions and everything. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you next week again. I'll be back here. Uh, giving some more teaching on the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of the Son, and the Father's kingdom. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. Bye.